You're listening to Talking Law, the podcast where business owners just like you discover how to avoid legal landmines and build value using smart legal tips. Hi, it's Joanna Oki here and welcome back to Talking Law, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. Adrian, welcome along to the Deal Room podcast. It's so good to have you on the show. Thank you, Joe. Good to be with you. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now today we are talking about the considerations of grants in relation to the acquisition of business businesses, which um, I think is such an interesting topic. Before we get into that, maybe can you just give us a quick 30-second background of who you are and um, why you are the go-to person in this grant space? So for 22 years, we've been working in the grant sector. Uh, we initially started as grant writers, um, but what we realised there was a big gap in the market around understanding what grants are available. So we have built the most comprehensive list of grants in Australia. It's a live, updated, ongoing list uh, called Grant Guru, and we've got all of the grants that are in there, over 6,000 for businesses and not-for-profits, worth approximately $100 billion. Wow. Okay, that's brilliant. I mean, how fabulous to have a resource all in one place, um, you know, with all of this information. And and I guess the one other thing that we should mention as well, mentioning that you also have another business that has an advisory service in relation to grants. So indeed, the sorts of things that we're talking about today might be, um, you, you know, fall into that advisory service if um, if buyers. Um, want to ensure they understand any grants that are on foot at the moment. So I just thought I'd tease that out for our listeners so they understand sort of the two different options that you work with. Yes, thank you. So Grant Ready is our consulting arm and we do the grant writing and we do support services around grants. And Grant Guru is an online product where people can go and find the information they want themselves. It's, it's all part of the grants process. If people want to be effective with grants, it's best not to start with grant writing. It's best to understand how grants work, then find the right grants, then they can do the grant writing. And then the final step is the acquittals and reporting, which is essentially making sure they keep the funding that they've secured. I like it. Make sure they keep the funding they secured. Well, I think this is part of what I want to dig into in um, what to consider in relation to government grants in business acquisitions. So maybe Adrian, give us a really quick rundown. What are the top things you think buyers should be thinking about um, in relation to the area of business grants when they're out um, looking to buy a target business. Yeah, and I think this is a really important point because most people do an acquisition and then they think about the issues later or they crop up and they realise they have a problem to deal with. So just awareness of these issues in advance is really helpful. You could probably break them into two categories. The first category is the compliance. Um, and the contractual aspects of a grant. And if an organization has been awarded a grant, they will have signed a contract, which will stipulate the terms in which they need to um, keep receiving that funding, um, how they need to equip the funding, and any rules around what they do or do not need to do to make sure they don't have to pay that funding back. Generally, there will be clauses around um, ownership, um, funding that's incurred, execution of that work, um, and even some IP clauses. Those things are really important. They're not overly complicated. If you know in advance what they mean and the implications, it's generally fine. But 99% of the time, people don't think about it until the acquisitions occurred. And then they go, Houston, we've got a problem. <laughs> and then they have to work backwards to try and solve it. And in my experience is that's always problematic. Trying to solve a problem when you've got it is going to be more expensive uh, and more risky for your funding than just getting it right at the start. So just to break that down, <clears throat> Some of the simple things that people need to know um, is that when an acquisition occurs, um, the funding will have been provided to a certain entity. So it's important to understand what's going to happen to that entity. Uh, the assets being broken up and sold off, is a new entity going to acquire the capital, the IP, et cetera? Or is that entity just going to sit within a larger group? Um, there are generally um, rules around overseas ownership uh, where the activities are occurring. If any of those changes, it's really important to go back and check the contract. And not all contracts will be the same. So there's no one size fits all rule here. It's just important to go and tick these things off and go, yes, we've checked that activities are still occurring in a jurisdiction where they're required to occur. 
uh, ownership still fits the requirements. If there's an entity structural change, perhaps you're going from being a PTY limited company to perhaps becoming a trust, that might affect eligibility. Um, so these are quite simple things. Even the IP ownership, what's happening with the IP, where's it held, uh, that's really important to note. Uh, government doesn't really want to own your IP, but they will often stipulate where they want your IP to be held uh, and how they want it to be uh, exploited. So pretty important just to check um, issues around those. Um, they're, they're pretty basic things, but um, also simple things can happen when you're acquired, such as you might become part of a larger group. And as part of that, your turnover might change. And uh, some grants will have turnover requirements or, or limitations or thresholds. For example, uh, the R&D tax incentive program uh, awards uh, the funding in different ways or in different amounts according to your turnover. So essentially, there's a $20 million aggregated group turnover threshold. If you're under that and you're in losses, you can access the funding as in the form of a uh, offset, a cash offset, which is really just, uh, you know, the HO will cut you a check. If you're over that, then you get an additional tax deduction. It might sound like semantics, but if you're used to claiming the R&D tax and you spend a million dollars and you get a, a, a refund of $430,000 uh, check every year and you use that for your cash flow, you suddenly go over the $20 million threshold and now you're getting an additional 16% tax deduction. Um, you're going to be a bit shocked and you won't be um, perhaps fully ready for the impact that's going to happen on your cash flow. Such good points. Um, fabulous points. I get, as you're talking, I'm just remembering um, a, um, a matter that I was involved in years and years and years ago. Um, and um, it's quite a quite a funny memory, actually. I hadn't I hadn't thought about it for years until we until we started talking today. Um, I, and I was working on an acquisition um, of an industrial uh, business. In fact, I think it was a manufacturing business, come to think of it. They had a large component of um, income in the business related to funding because they were doing, uh, they were involved in some sort of innovative um, uh, production at the time. And, um, and we're acting by side and our buyers wanted to make sure they understood what was happening when there was an audit that was taking place by uh, by Oz Industry. So Oz Industry had sent a few um, uh, representatives out to audit the business. And so there was this urgent need for me to go out um, to the plant. And there was this, I just remember at the time, I'd gone straight from the office because it had been organised that day from the office. So I was in a suit. I had nothing else that I could wear at the time. So here I trudge in in my high heels and my suit in the middle of this, um, you know, let's just say, I stuck out like a sore thumb. Um, and of course, at that point, uh, you, you know, the um, the buyers and the sellers didn't necessarily want to be communicating um, that, that there was a sale that was um, happening with the business. So we had to quickly come up with um, a title for me that could justify why I was doing the walk around um, the plant with all of them, um, notwithstanding I looked like I was the last person who fit in there at the time. So anyway, that was just a, a funny, a funny story of the past. But the, I guess the whole point of that is, you know, you need to understand, you know, if there is funding in the business, and you're expecting that funding to continue into the future, you need to understand, you know, where the risk might be in a in a transaction for you in, in the continuity of that funding, you know, that might impact the way in which a sale happens, whether it's a share sale or a business sale, um, it might impact you, you know, your group structure might impact it, as, as you correctly said there, Adrian. Um, and and I guess, you, you know, you just have to understand um, that many elements of this funding aren't necessarily something that you can guarantee for, for the future as well. But I guess it's about understanding, you know, the, the eligibility criteria and whether you continue to meet that eligibility criteria moving forward. And also, maybe any risk to you taking on the business in relation to any clawbacks that might um, happen in relation to ac any activity in the past that may not have been in compliance. Yeah, and I think that we see this often at the highs and the lows of businesses. And, you know, the example you gave when you're getting acquired is generally a high point for most businesses. But sometimes at the low point, we've dealt with businesses where they've gone into administration. 
uh, and the administrator has then contacted us. We haven't dealt with them be- the, the business beforehand, but they've contacted us and said, hey, we're about to fold this business, but we think they're eligible perhaps to claim R&D tax. And because it's a retrospective program, you look back to the last 12 months, and then if you're eligible, you can claim the cost you incurred. And there are times when we've been able to jump in and confirm eligibility, put a claim through, receive some funds, and that's been a lifeline for a business that's allowed them to get through that next six or 12 months so they can move back into profitability and not have to fold. Uh, you know, we've seen this with grants as well. Uh, we had uh, one business, this was probably 15 years ago, where the bank was ready to put them into administration, but a line item came up saying, oh, they've got a grant. That grant was a three-year uh, long grant that we, they were being paid every six months in milestones. And the auditors asked us to come out and discuss what that actually meant. And we were able to have a look at that grant and say, they're meeting all their milestones. They're acquitting everything well. They're doing what they meant to do. They're going to keep receiving this grant funding for the next two years. And in that case, that funding was enough to keep them alive. In fact, they went on to become a national multi, multi million dollar business. Um, but that at that point in their life, you know, sitting in that room with the CEO who was shaking because he thought the bank was about to close his business um, was pretty scary. And the fact that the grant just allowed them to scrape through and then become what they became, for me, was a real eye opener about how important not just the grant can be, but the understanding of how grants work and fit into a business and their daily cash flow. Brilliant, wonderful. One other thing that, um, you, you know, I, I think it's useful for us to throw in is maybe also just that opportunity for a buyer. So we've talked about a buyer coming in and, and uh, reviewing any of the government grants that might be there or, or other type of funding that might be there um, at, existing at the point of acquisition. But perhaps um, there is also an opportunity for buyers to consider as well in their acquisition targets, whether there might be um, unrecognised opportunities that they can then, you know, um, take advantage of after acquisition in relation to grants. What's what's your thoughts there, Adrian? I think they fall into two categories here. You've got grants that are entitlements, and some people don't realise they're actually, as long as they qualify, they are entitled to that funding. So we will have often we'll have an American or European conglomerate contact us and say, we're acquiring an Australian entity. We just had a thought that maybe we should value um, the entitlement grant into the valuation of that business. Um, And we've found that can make a really big difference to the valuation of the business. And sometimes it's overlooked or forgotten. And they might just want an assurance from us that they are entitled to get that funding and an estimate of the value of that funding. Um, We've seen some really impressive... Um, increase in valuations by factoring that in. Uh, And, you know, sometimes that's um, in the interest or not in the interest of the acquirer to do it. But I think for the business that's being acquired, it's always in the interest of them doing that. And that relates to the programs we were talking about, like R&D tax, export market development grant, and a number of the other entitlement programs. But there's also the prospective programs. These are the ones where um, you're not entitled to them, but they're competitive You apply for them up front. If you're successful, you get them. And what we've been asked to do a lot more of lately um, by CFOs and by boards is to actually build a grant strategy. The grant strategy is simply a list of grants that a company uh, might be able to access. And and we would trawl through the thousands of grants that are available. We'd look at their projects. We might come up with five or 10 grants and say, look, you're eligible for these. Look, you're probably a good chance for a couple of them. This is the value of them. Uh, And this is the effort and cost you would have to do to get them. And we find that people are now starting to factor that in just because grants are being seen as an income stream, just like any other income stream, not more important, not less important, but people are just starting to factor it in. And we're finding that people are almost getting in trouble at either a board level or an operation level if they forget to think about the grants. Brilliant. Well, look, um, I just want to say a huge thank you, Adrian, for coming on to the show today. Such um, interesting information, um, and I, I really think something that is not thought a lot about 
in this space. So really good points, really good ideas for buyers um, in relation to the opportunity that might be there that you may never have thought of. And so, of course, we will put a link in our show notes through um, to you and through to Grant Guru and Grant Ready, but um, maybe just tell us what's the easiest way that our listeners can um, find out more about you and, and interact with you. Um, easiest way is just to go to grantguru.com.au. Uh, all of the information spout out there. It's um, very easy to use. It's self-explanatory. If they've got any questions, just shoot us an email through the website. Um, and we're really here to support people. Now, our aim is not to stand in the way of them getting grants. It's to create a level playing field and to facilitate that. And we just want people to have their grants radar up because we know that grants help businesses grow and often helps them to go to that next level or achieve something that they haven't been able to achieve today. Brilliant. Love it. Adrian, huge thank you for coming on to the show today. Thanks, Joe. I really appreciate it. Well, that's it for this episode. Now, and make sure you catch more valuable topics around this area and around the legal tips and tricks for law generally in talking law. Now, if you're interested in talking to our lawyers about anything related to this topic, then head over either to our website at aspectlegal.com. Or to the show notes where you can find a link straight to booking a free 15 minute discussion with our legal team. Well, that's it. Thanks again for listening in. This has been Joanna Oki and Talking Law, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Talking Law. Tune in next time for more smart legal tips and tricks to keep you clear of those legal landmines. If you want to get a download of today's show notes, head over to talkinglaw.com.au. Are you looking for a top quality legal team to assist you in your organisation? Aspect Legal is an innovative commercial legal practice that specialises in providing fast and professional services for their clients. If you'd like to chat about how we might be able to assist you, simply head over to our website at aspectlegal.com.au to book in a time for a free discussion with one of our lawyers.